do that. What? With the wine. They look damn silly doing it without the wine. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to have so many set routines. I just wish you'd surprise me sometimes. Oh, I don't know. You didn't like it very much when I dropped the icebox on your toe. <laughs> Why don't you take me out? Well, in the middle of lunch. Because <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't see why we have to stick to these routines. You're retired now. Your time's your own. I mean, I don't have to go hippie just because I haven't got an office to go to. <laughs> I'm not asking you to take me to Kathmandu. Where, then? Oh, anywhere. I don't care. Anywhere for a change. Why don't you sit on the side of the table for a bit? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know where you want to go. I mean, it's, it's, it's so feminine, isn't it? I mean, why are you women so indecisive? Because marriage is a way of having one's brain removed. <laughs> I mean, if I wanted to go... What are you saying? <laughs> if I wanted to go somewhere, I mean, I'd know where it was that I wanted to go to. I mean, is this everything you want from life? Well, this... this dining room? <laughs> no, no, I'm... No, I'm very fond of the drawing room. <laughs> and the conservatory. Ah, that'll be for me. Why shouldn't it be for me? Who rings you up? That's exactly what I mean. Tell the man in the middle of lunch. Hello. Ask him to ring at a more convenient time. What is that? Beck and call of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come if it's urgent. <laughs> Ask him if it's urgent. <laughs> urgent, they ring again, I suppose. I said I'd come if it was urgent. Oh. Well, don't monopolise the telephone if it's urgent. <laughs> oh. It was for me. Just as well if I've got to speak through my fingers. <laughs> Was Rodney. What does he want? Oh, just saying hello. Good heavens, if our own son can't ring his mother occasionally. Not planning a visit, is he? No, he isn't. Oh. When does he ever visit, and can you blame him? Yes, I can usually find something. <laughs> I wish you'd try to get on with him. I do get on with him. Bought him a bicycle. That, well, that was for his birthday, 20 years ago. <laughs> God, was it really? Time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> Couldn't we pay him a visit? He's on the south coast, organising the North Face. <laughs> north Face of the South Coast? No such place. Oh, no, dear. The North Face is one of the pop groups who make records for his company. God almighty. <laughs> you saw him last Christmas? No, we didn't. He couldn't come. Well, don't want the boy here every Christmas. I mean, it becomes routine, doesn't it? Don't you want to see him? Oh, well, I want to see him. Well, you ought to try and get to know him better. Damn it, he lived here for 18 years. What else is there to know? And therefore, arrangements for this and subsequent reissues of these artists should be made for distribution under the Stella label. Signature copies to all concerned. Thanks, all right. <laughs> 
North Face are playing up again. What's wrong now? They can't get Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> I don't believe this. Oh, and uh, your father and mother are coming down. Myra, you're making jokes. Well, tell me you're making a funny. Sorry. What? Your mother rang back. She's persuaded your father to bring her down for a visit. Well, how long? Just the one night. I booked them a room. Whole night with my father? Oh, God! <laughs> and a couple of friends. I booked them a room, too. Which of my father's friends? Myra, you've no idea the kind of weirdos he has for friends. <laughs> the clergyman and his wife. Oh, great. Well, we're going to have to clean up this lot's language for a start. Hey, man! Have you seen the crap they serve as Yorkshire pudding, man? Not now, fellas. What does he mean, not now? It's a crisis, man. Hey, Rod, I'm telling you, man, there's no gravy in this old cheesy mausoleum. Five stars and bog old gravy. It's a scandal, man. You've had gravy. I've seen you with gravy. He thinks that were gravy. Yeah, that was never gravy, man. It was brown, all right, but then so is... <laughs> <laughs> I want you to start cleaning up this dialogue. My father's coming. Tell him to bring some gravy, man. Oh, yeah. I'll go and gee them up. Oh, don't go hustling them, Redvers. Why are you sitting on that side? You know you prefer the other side. Oh, all right, then. Go and hustle them. Oh, Redvers. Morning, Jane. Padre ready, is he? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh wait. <laughs> Stay. Stay. Mm. Morning, Padre. Hello, Redvers. Ready for the off? With you in a minute. Stay, you bitch. You are not coming with us. <laughs> oh. Who's looking after things while you're away? My verger. Gets on with the dog, does he? Well, I don't see why not. He's very capable. Knows where the hymn books are. Does he know where the first aid books are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to my two days off, Redvers. Right, come on, then. Jane's already in the car. <laughs> she put my golf things in. Ah. Now I should check on that. That's just the sort of thing they're liable to forget. <laughs> Did you pack my clubs? Yes, your golf things are in the boot. Yeah. Did you lock the front door? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the pier looks fine. I thought we'd open with the chopper. Aerial shots. The lads with their instruments set up at the very end of the pier. Well, can you find him for me? It's going to be fine. Yes, I do know what time it is there. We can go very high, scan the town, the lads on the soundtrack banging away, then whack! It's all gone. Just the beach. No sound, just a bit of surf. Maybe an odd seagull. He will want to speak to us if you tell him who it is. Then go in on the shingle. Fade in something smooth and meaningful music-wise. Yes. Thank you. How's that sound with you? <sighs> it's too long. Well, I can cut, cut, cut. Really make it move, man. I mean, what am I going to do for one entire evening with my father? <laughs> I'll get you there in time for tea. If you leave it to me. What does that fool think he's doing? I think he's trying to save his life. Catch him on his way back. They call this progress. Pick your own strawberries, pour your own petrol. That might be rather nice, dear. <laughs> What's she talking about? If we took some strawberries. <laughs> well, only a few. I only meant a few. Now, Aileen, I want you to have a go at this. Me? Don't worry, it's a child's play once you get the hang of it. Come on, get out. Oh, but... Come along now. 
It's all very well relying on me, but suppose I'm not here sometime. Yes, just suppose. What would you do then, eh? Suppose I don't drive. Now, look, you just get on with it while the Padre and I stretch our legs. Oh, Redvers. Count yourself lucky. Some husbands would just hang about and watch you make a fool of yourself. <laughs> Clever of you, Redvers. Keep the little woman involved like that. Uh, it gives them an interest to know. Right. <laughs> Hadn't better get too far away in case she needs me. I think she's finished. Already? Looks like it. Well, there you are, you see. Got to give them their due, you know. They can be quite good at simple and repetitive tasks. <laughs> Oh, God. What's wrong? What's wrong? My father's coming. Oh, come on, Roddy. He can't be that bad. You see, nobody understands. It's like some rare disease. Until they've had it, nobody knows. A few hours, that's all. I never know how to talk to him. <laughs> Meaning, listen. How long have you two been on bad terms? Since I was two. Oh. <laughs> it got really bad when I was two and a half. Ever since then, it's been all downhill. You know what he wanted me to be? A wages clerk. That's not so terrible. You think so? It's my birthday. I'm seven years old. I want a cowboy outfit. He tells me, no, I'm going to be a wages clerk. What did you get? I got the hell out of there as soon as I left <laughs> school. And now he's following me, for God's sake. He doesn't trouble you very often. I can't forgive him for killing my mother. Your mother's still alive. Yes, but does she know that? <laughs> you think they know how to make gravy? You're in the South, man. I thought they were supposed to lynch niggers, not gravy. That's Tennessee, not Torquay. <laughs> this isn't Torquay, is it? Same difference. They don't lynch coloreds down here. Right, they're all out spoiling the lousy gravy. Hey, it's the Darby and Joan Club. Smell the sea Oh, isn't it lovely? What are you doing? I'm enjoying the sea air. What are you doing? I'm looking for somebody to give me a hand with these bags. <laughs> well, we may as well. Where's Gerald? <sighs> Leave Gerald alone. He's having a few minutes quiet meditation. And what are you doing? Aileen, I've got a thousand details on my mind. Plus holding up this boot lid to make sure that you're both quite safe. <laughs> yes, watch that one. Mind that, baby. Damn it! Huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, 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 dear. <laughs> New shoes, Redlands. <laughs> <laughs> Just smell that sea air. We were attempting to. Put my golf things in, did you? Here. Good, good. <laughs> uh, it must be terrible to grow old. Yeah, well, don't worry. Never gonna happen with the grub they serve down here. <laughs> hey. I like the little fella rubbing his foot. <laughs> you wouldn't think he'd come all this way in his flash card just to rub his foot. <laughs> <laughs> Strange lot to find on the steps of a good hotel. Mustn't be uncharitable, Redvers. You know, I meet quite a few young people in the course of my duties. Really? Uh, once you get to know them, they're usually pretty peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> they're allowed to get into bad habits, that's the trouble. <laughs> Nobody to organise them properly. All right, you lot. One, two, three, four. Come on, give the ladies a hand with the bags. Hey, he's a card, isn't he? Just like me Uncle Willie. <laughs> Come on, let's have you. Chop, chop. Thank you, boys. That's uh, all right, love. If you're married to him, you need all the help you can get. <laughs> this way, Buena. That's it. Put him inside. Just like your Uncle Willie. Oh, I'm mad. I think they all wore gear like that in the olden days. <laughs> well done, Redlands. Nothing to it, really. Aileen, 
Have you got any change? I seem to run out of coppers. I've uh, got a 50p. 50p? <laughs> We're not putting them through university. <laughs> Have you got anything smaller? <laughs> if there's anything you want, just ring. And Rod will be in to see you as soon as he's off the phone to America. <laughs> Did you hear that, Redvers? America! Thank you very much, dear. If there's anything you need, just call. Just imagine Rodney on the phone to America. Yes, I wouldn't read too much into that if I were you. Oh, why not? Oh, it's probably a bit of image making. More likely he's on the phone just around the corner and see what's happened to his laundry. <laughs> why do you run him down like that? Oh, I don't want to run him down. I just wish he'd get a decent occupation so that I could be proud of him. Can't you be proud of this? If it's paid for, yeah. Oh, how can you say such a thing? Oh, have you seen the telly? I can start a business on what they're charging for a double room. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney must be doing well. Can't tell, can I? Show business, all this flashy front. Is there anything behind it? What are you doing? I'm just checking for jewel thieves. <laughs> Yes. It's where they hide, you know. And in the small hours of the morning, when everybody's asleep, away they go with the jewels that some fool woman's left on the bedside table. Oh, I hardly think they'd be bothered, not for my earrings. Can't tell, really, can you? What's wrong with your earrings? Nothing's wrong with them. I should hope not. I bought those earrings for you. It's just that I don't think they'd attract the really top-drawer jewel thieves. Anyway, I don't think there's enough room to hide under these beds. There's room enough. You just accept my judgment in these matters. Hello, oh, Mum. Oh. Hey, you're looking great. And you. Where's the old man? Oh, he's right here. Well, he was here. I know he was here. There you are, you see. Told you there was room. <laughs> He's under the bed. That's right, dear. What's he doing under the bed? Looking for jewel thieves. Have you been on a bit of daily? And for a way out. <laughs> if you could just, just lift the bed. <laughs> That's you, Roddy. Uh, yes, Dad. Thought the feet were familiar. <laughs> How are you, Roddy? Fine, Dad. Great. Good. Anyway, keep him fit, are you? Fine, I'm in fine shape. Why the hell don't you lift this bed then? <laughs> it seems to be screwed down. Damn it, it's only a single bed. Don't shout at the boy. Who's shouting at the boy? I would have hoped that after all this time you'd have given up shouting at the boy. I am not shouting. Dad, I wish you wouldn't shout at Mother. Will you both be quiet and lift the bloody bed? <laughs> Look, it seems to be screwed to the floor. I'll go and get a screwdriver. No, 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 don't, don't go wandering about. Just pull me out. Oh, hasn't changed a lot, has he? Oh, I don't know, dear. When he comes out, he may be a little flatter. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that, don't, not that, don't pull there. <laughs> you hold me here. That's better. <laughs> I think I'll go and get a screwdriver. You want to carry a screwdriver, Amy? Just ripped half my damn sleeve off. I could have been out of here by now if you'd carried a, a screwdriver. Not as if there's room in your handbag. <laughs> I'm for a garden fork in that effort. <laughs> Hello? If I'm not mistaken, They've got woodworm under here. <laughs> oh, yes, no doubt about it at all. There's woodworm under your bed, Aileen. <laughs> wonder what mine's like. <laughs> what are you pacing about for? <laughs> Why don't you just slip into something more comfortable? <laughs> what are you shrieking for? No need to panic. Apart from a little discomfort, I'm perfectly all right. 
That's better. Keep calm. <coughs> Don't hear me in a panic. Yep. What the... Get off! Yep. Get this off. Get it off. Ailey! Don't stand there. There's no... No need to be calm now. Get it off! Good dog. Uh-oh. Nice dog. <laughs> Can you hit it with something, Ailey? No, I'm going to lie very, very still here and dominate it with my eyes. <laughs> I want you to creep up at it and dispose of it somehow. Suki! Where are you, Suki? Get that woman in here. Suki! <laughs> well, I did move, Aileen. It's only inches from my nose. Oh! oh, oh. Suki! Oh, bad girl. What you doing in here? Oh. Come on, then, oh, naughty girl. Good thing you chose an empty room. Well, have that thing put down, madam. <laughs> oh, my God. There he goes again. The weirdos that are these days. Making oh, people oh, oh. scream. Has it gone? <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Now, I want you to keep calm. I'm the deputy manager. Don't talk to me as if I was a lunatic. <laughs> I am calm. Ask him what he's doing making people scream. Who said that? I did. Who are you? Uh, never mind all that. Now, what are you doing under the bed? Oh, my wife will explain. <laughs> Tell them, Aileen. <laughs> well, say something, Aileen. There's no time to be reticent. <laughs> Tell them who I am. The name's Potter. I used to be Potter Mintz, you may remember. <coughs> Potter Mintz the Hottermintz. <laughs> oh, uh, is this your room? It's my room, yes. I'm terribly sorry, madam. We'll have it cleared in a moment. There appears to be a lunatic under the bed. <laughs> I'm a guest here, damn it. Aileen, tell them what I am. I think they've worked it out for themselves. <laughs> Oh. Ah, oh, sorry. I got held up. Oh, yeah? Well, down, really. <laughs> I took the liberty. Ah. Seen your boy, have you? His feet, mostly. <laughs> Looking well, are they? <laughs> what? His feet. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, they're all right, I suppose. Wearing those flashy shoes. <laughs> Knew an adulterer like that once. <laughs> That's the kind. <laughs> At least I assume he was an adulterer. Oh, yeah. Would be with footwear like that. <laughs> what we used to call correspondent shoes. <laughs> Quite. Uh, totally impractical for any of the other nine commandments. <laughs> ah. ah. Sherry Jane? Oh, thank you, Revers. Same for you, Aileen. I'd rather have Two a... Two sherry's, please. <laughs> to upset both staff and guests. Leave uh, it with me. Within minutes of his arrival must be something of a record. I'll have words with him. Uh, if you would, Mr. Potter. I will, I will. Yes. Uh, to be perfectly frank, we were already a little apprehensive about your reservation with us. Oh, nothing personal, you understand. Just my line of work. Uh, quite, quite. One hears such tales about the behaviour of pop musicians. Oh, yes? Uh, however, I'm happy to say that your uh, young men have behaved, so far, quite admirably. They are pining for good gravy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just, uh, your father. Someone ought to keep an eye on him. Yes. Private word, eh? Well, come in here. We can talk in here. Anywhere. <clears throat> Did you screw down the bed? I screwed down the bed, yes. Ah, oh, that's what I like. Attention to detail, thoroughness. You're a potter, lad. Despite the disguise. <laughs> what disguise? Well, the showbiz rig. I realise, of course, you've got to wear it for shock value. <laughs> shock value? Yes. All publicity is good publicity, eh? Don't forget that I used to handle the advertising budget for Potomich, you know. Dad, not that it matters, but I always dress like this. Well, 
Snags in every profession, you know. I like dressing like this. Oh, I don't overdo it. I mean, <laughs> with your father. You can tell me. <laughs> if I can ever get a word in. Well, I did warn you about show business, you know. Don't forget, I did warn you. All right, well, you've got to learn the hard way. Dad, sit down a minute. All right, you tried it and you don't like it. Now you want to come back into real life, eh? Dad, listen Nothing to, to worry me. about. New pair of shoes, decent suit, and uh, we'll have you rehabilitated in no time. Dad, listen to me. If you keep your mouth shut, nobody will ever need to know that you had anything to do with show business. Dad! God knows I'll never say anything. Dad, will you listen? <coughs> what is it? I'm not leaving show business, as you call it. I'm, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing, promoting records. I'm, I'm very good at it. Your mother worries about you, you know. <laughs> No need. I mean, both she and I would much rather see you in a steady job. I've got a steady job. I'm not entirely without influence, you know. One word from me and you could be back in that wages office like a flash. <laughs> no. Sales and invoice? No. Well, what do you want to talk to me about? The management asked me if I would. What management? Here, in the hotel. Oh. Want a word with me to that? Yes, I'm afraid you're a disturbing influence. <laughs> That's very nice of him to say. I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid you're making the staff very nervous. I am. They've got a damn cheek, haven't they? Have you seen the scruffs they're employing for porters? Dad, that's another thing. They're my boys. They're not porters, they're musicians. Musicians? <laughs> Do you earn a living? <laughs> a very good one. Wish I'd known that. Never have tipped them. <laughs> well, I mean, how was I to know? Quite. They didn't look like musicians to me. I don't think I've ever known any musicians. Oh, you know, they wear dinner jackets, dandruff and soup stains. <laughs> like referees at wrestling matches. <laughs> yes, very similar. <laughs> If you don't know any musicians, who's playing the organ for you nowadays? Miss Melrose. Oh. What you mean? <laughs> so it's her up in the organ loft every Sunday. Keeps her off the streets. I oh, hadn't seen her about for a bit. Lucky you. Thought she must be dead. Nah. She just plays like that. 